Hello there, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this video, I'm going to build this baseball shadow box. It's 27 inches tall and 18 inches wide. Each baseball has its own individual shelf to sit on. The balls come out very easily, so you can swap them out for your favorite baseball. This is a gift for a young sports enthusiast, so I'm pretty sure he'll enjoy it. The back is a different colored wood. The hanger is made of stainless steel wire, so it won't fall off the wall. It has a nice bead around the outside edge, and it was a really a fun build, and it wasn't very hard at all. So let's get out in the shop and get started. After I break the lumber down into its rough length and width, I like to use my hand plane and run a nice square smooth edge so that I can put a bead on it. I like using this beading bit in my router table. It just makes a nice smooth edge that is easy to feel. All the beads are cut. Now it's time to cut the miters. I find this digital gauge works really well for adjusting my table saw blade to a perfect 45. I always keep a nice straight piece of oak on my miter gauge, but after a while it gets chewed up. Rather than replace the entire board, I get a piece of quarter inch plywood and put some double sided tape on it. Stick it on and now I've got a nice fresh backer board. Now it's time to cut all the miters. I start by cutting a 45 on the end of every piece. This doesn't have to be any length because I'll cut the final length later. I put a stop block on the miter gauge because a lot of these are repeatable cuts. One thing you have to be very, very careful about is that this cross has 12 individual sides. On the front of each side is a bead. This bead goes on the outside edge of the board. It's very easy to get these boards oriented in such a way that the cut is made backwards. Don't ask me how I know. It happened several times. So please be very careful in your orientation of how you're putting it on the saw. With all the miters cut, it's time to cut the rabbits for the back panel. I like to use this L fence instead of burying the dado blade into an auxiliary fence. To cut the grooves for the shelves, I take the diameter of the ball and add an eighth of an inch. That's the distance between the shelves. I mark that out and then transfer those lines to the piece on the other side. To make it easy to line the marks on the board up with where the saw blade is, I take a straight edge and lay it on each side of the saw blade. Then I take a marking knife and mark on the throat plate. I then take a pencil and fill in the mark. That way it makes it very easy to line up the mark on the board before it even gets to the saw blade. After I've machined all the individual shelves to an eighth of an inch thick, I cut them to size. I then find the middle and tape them all together. I put them on my drill press and drill a hole through all of them, that way the balls have a place to sit. Where the two shelves fit in the horizontal section of the cross, to mount them I have to cut a rabbit in the top and the bottom. 
I applied the stain before I assembled the cross. I like to use General Finishes water-based dye. Now it's time to start some glue up. I've found that the best way to glue together miters in small projects like this is to use blue painter's tape. After you've applied the tape, open the miters up and apply the glue. Then fold it in on itself and the tape acts like a clamp. I also like to use these spring-loaded picture frame clamps. They've got a small point on them that will make a small mark on the wood, but that can be dealt with later. These apply pressure directly across the miter. So it's just rinse and repeat for the small section. For the clear coat on this project, I use a semi-gloss lacquer in a rattle can. This is really easy to apply. I put four coats on. This turntable makes it really easy for small projects. Now to add the back. I found this 3 16 inch plywood that has some really interesting grain that's different on both sides. The part that's going to go on the inside almost looks like bamboo and it's a light color so it'll help brighten up the inside of the shadow box a little bit. First I put some glue in, some brad nails. And this project is just about finished. This hanger is made of 1 16th inch thick stainless steel wire. I clamped both ends and screwed it in. This will never break. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Thank you and I'll see you on my next one.